Do you dread painting human faces and heads in Warhammer? If you do, there's probably two reasons that I would guess at least you don't look forward to painting human faces. Number one will be that you don't practice regularly. You pop the helmet on, then you don't have to worry about it. So you're not practicing. Number two is that when you do do them, if you're using tricks or whatever methods you're doing, they're not the type of methods that are gonna help you improve time on time. You don't have to be repeating it a lot, but if you learn a little bit each time you go, then each time it might get a little bit easier or you might learn a little something by accident. So what we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna break it down very, very simply. The actual flesh painting steps, there's like, there's three colors and 90% of it's done with two colors. It's like four steps or something to get the flesh looking like pretty solid. Then we do eyes, and then we give them an okay beard. It's gonna be that simple. We're gonna treat the face as a selection of shapes, two shapes rather. It's gonna be one tube here, if I lean forwards to my light. You'll see that basically the front of my face is is lit up and it looks a little bit dramatic. Editor Ian is actually a portrait photographer, so some dramatic portraits might be appearing on screen now. And then there's a, there's a dome on top, literally a dome in the case of our bald head here. Okay, so that's gonna be highlighted like this, and the cylinder is gonna be highlighted at the front. And just treating it like that makes it so much simpler. A tiny bit of TT blending in, which can be stippling, or it can be glazing, or it can be layering or feathering, whatever you like and whatever you prefer. And suddenly things look okay. And because you've got roughly stuff in the right places, it doesn't matter whether you're perfectly smooth or not. The majority of this was done actually with a size two. This is a good quality brush, so it's got a good point on it, but it's not a tiny fiddly brush. So don't be intimidated. Finally, if you want to give us any suggestions or you have any questions about this, pop them below. We will give the best suggestion, the most liked one, a set of your choosing, a texture palette of your choosing. And there is a wonderful video from Eric, uh, who's one of our signature artists. His work will be appearing on screen now. He's ridiculous. If you want to watch something as a follow-up to this, even just to look at, I'd really recommend checking that out. Let's jump in. Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. You will get better and things will get easier from now on, I promise. Okay, so this is perfect for Space Marines or for Stormcast uh, head tutorial. Bald head tutorial specifically, but of course, if he's got hair, you can just approach it. How I'm gonna be approaching this guy's beard. I'm gonna be sticking with mainly these two colors. You can add in some pinky stuff, you can add in some ready stuff. What I'm gonna concentrate on is getting a solid result fast. And we're gonna do that by approaching it like this guy is kind of lit from the front. So we're gonna have a focal point, which is gonna be around the eyes. We'll try and not screw them up. And then basically, as long as your flesh looks okay, everything else is icing on the cake. So let's jump in. So rather than going from a black base or anything like that, if you use a brown, it's just a kind of, your shadows aren't gonna look out of place. Or if you miss somewhere, it's not nearly as consequential as if you know, there's a great big black line around his ear or something like that. So mix them together until we get a tone that we're happy with for the base. And you just blob that down, however, all over. Obviously, if you're doing darker skin, you can involve other colors. If you're doing much, much lighter skin, you'd have more of the bone. Up to you how you want to approach it. Just get it all over. It's a head and they're small and they've got wrinkles. So the most important thing is to not drift your paint into the wrinkles. So get this in a couple of coats. Go around the areas that you have. Go beyond the bit that's fleshy. So I recommend going into the bits that are hairy. You just want to make sure you don't miss anywhere and that you don't drift it into the eyes or the very noticeable wrinkles that a lot of the GW models have. Two coats, whatever you need, all good. So second step, I'm still using my size two here. Gonna add in quite a lot more of our bone. So you see how this bit's lighter here because where my light's reflecting, that's basically what we're looking to suggest. So all of the front of the face, the bits that stick out at least, are gonna be pretty lightly colored. You can make a judgment call if you think you've gone too far. Maybe I have here. You can always mix in more of your previous color. And we're not aiming for perfection. Because this is on camera, this is a lot further from my face than I would like. I would suggest you get it as close as possible. Because it's a small area and you're not traveling far, your area is going to have less time to dry. So just let them dry. Like one of the biggest tips I can possibly give you here is to let your areas dry. I will go to his head, which is going to be lovely and shiny because he's bald. And then basically around his front here, around his eyes and whatever, catch the top of the ears. I'm just going to make sure that I have blobbed cheekbones, I've blobbed the colour. It's not about it being, you know, particularly neat or perfect. Don't miss anywhere. Take your time and do it in two coats if you need to. Don't worry about these harsh transitions. We'll be doing something about that. Okay, you have two options at this stage. You can take exactly the same brush, uh, exactly the same paint colour and just add some water to it. See, it is a bit softer there. I'll put it here so you can see it better. And what you can do is you can go from outside of your area into your area and you can just push paint into it. That's fine. You kind of just repeat that a little bit. I'll do it softer than you think. And it's not about it being perfect at all. Just go from the darker bit to the lighter bit. You can do that a few times 
or very easy, grab a dry brush, one drop of water, back of the brush, work it in. And you're gonna do an equivalent, but you're just gonna do it stippling. So same point on the palette. Again, let me show you on the stick. This is not super strong paint. Either is fine, and both are basically the same. Either way, we're just putting on paint that isn't opaque. I like both, but you can do one or the other, whatever works for you. So your next step, if you've got a pale head, is put a little bit of color in. You could use anything that's pinky ready. You could use a wash. You could use your brown if used as a wash. Uh, what do I have to hand? You could use contrast. I'm gonna assess this one on my finger. Bit too browny. Want, want something a bit more ready. A wash is gonna be more gentle. A strong contrast is gonna be more scary. And this is a very strong, strong contrast. It's very scary. Okay, so I'm gonna dilute it fully. I can test it over my colors on my palette. I'm just going to push this to areas where blood is on the face. So these are the features basically. Push it into some wrinkles around the nose. There is. And then just as we push stuff up before we're going to push down towards these. I think I probably could have used a bit more of the red, but better too little than too much. You could do that a couple of times if you want. You could also leave some in your wrinkles. Don't worry about being neat because we're going to highlight these areas soon and we'll cover any mistakes that are on the raised areas. Okay, so we're getting there. I'm not going to do eyes yet. I'm going to stick with my big brush, but maybe soon it's going to be time to step down. So I can match my colors. I, I know if I'm brighter than my previous step because my previous step's here. So this is why it's nice to use a palette. You can use a wet palette if you want, or if you're somewhere really, really warm, that might be a good idea. I'm in England. It's not warm and it's not dry. So let's reestablish those details. I cannot emphasize enough how that's a beard or a mustache, at least that doesn't need it. This should be really close to your nose. I'm doing this further away than is ideal and it's making it a lot harder. Begins look okay. Same as we did before, you can dilute it or you can go with stippling and we're just gonna make it look. So we're, we're going towards the area where we want it to be the strongest color, just towards the front. Like I said, you could absolutely be stippling this. You can even get his nose a little bit. Okay, so everyone's least favorite bit. What do we do about horrible, horrible eyes? I could have used Reekland for the uh, for the ready wash step. Well, that would have made sense, wouldn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna very carefully darken around the eyeballs with contrast or a shade or watered down paint. Again, don't don't flood it. Let it dry. Let it dry. Okay, through to a much lighter colour. So for reference, this is lighter than our bone that we put in the skin. You could just have what you had, but I really like using ivories. And this is a paint that I find very useful at the time. Teeny brushes out, I've dropped all the way down, like right down. So for a comparison, a lot smaller. Still in Series S, but I've gone from a two to a triple zero. I'd be fine with a double zero as well. That's my favourite small brush. What we're going to do is we're going to practice our control on his teeth. Hold breath, brace. Insert tank top picture. Right, I'm not doing an amazing job here, but it is okay. I can put a wash around the teeth to kind of reestablish those edges. So what I can do to help myself is I can make sure there's no paint left in the brush and put some water in the brush and then just take a little bit of the ivory. I just want a little bit at the very edge of the brush. I'm gonna turn my mini sideways. I'm gonna essentially do stroking motions until I get at where the eye is. Aim to just about miss it until you hit it. When you think you've done an okay job, for me, for army painting, okay is what we aim for and what we tell ourselves we're happy with, all right? Doesn't look awful, that's fine. You can kind of sort stuff out around it as well a bit, but ideally try and get it all right. So, there a little bit. I've just been possessed, but uh, we can maybe do something about that with some washes. That is whatever color you like. There's one for the old schoolers of you. Oldie but a goldie. Right, my only aim here is to get something potentially centrally towards the top of the eye. Same idea. Hold breath. That's kind of okay. So we're just going to need to net around the edges now. You need to be careful at this stage. You don't want to drown the entire eye. So small amount of a wash. 
This is why we've been using browns, because if we use black here, it'd be pretty easy to do something that kind of stood out if we went wrong. The brown is a little bit more forgiving, so take off load the excess. And I can shrink his slightly too big eyes. Wash his lips. There we go. Now, it's not perfect, but for an army, that'd be absolutely fine. And it didn't take that long. The eyes is horrible. Nothing can be done about that. You can always just uh, wash them and not try and do pupils. And then one option you have is to take whatever your final color was, take a load of it off until it's really, really diluted. And I'm just gonna pop a couple of details on, on some features, so. Yeah, too much. Maybe not too much. It's army painting, we need high contrast. Maybe it was too much. Probably should have had a little bit of this in there, even if it's a tiny, tiny amount of word bearers in with it. There you go, you watch me screw up. One mistake a video, that's normal. Don't even have to try and put them in, just do them naturally. Yeah, so mixing the color would have made that a bit easier to pull off. Yeah, a bit too much of the ivory in there. Maybe we could have got away with just a pure version of the Screaming Skull. Anyway, that is fine for faces. If you try this, you'll get better at it. Once you put the beard in as well, that'll carry a lot of it. Mustaches are quite dangerous, they're difficult. So just make sure you don't blub on the nose or anything while you're doing them, or uh, fill in your teeth. There you go, you are good to go. For his beard and his mustache, I've just gone for Dark Reaper, and I'm gonna add some ivory to it. You can be a silver fox. And it's simply a matter of just adding a little bit more ivory to your Dark Reaper for the highlights. Just going to be looking to give the impression of direction. Don't like fixate massively on hitting the bits that stick out necessarily. My main focus is just to have a line that goes down. And if you find it hard, you can just concentrate on the ones at the front and then do an okay job on the others. Okay, that's made a big difference. One more step, just more ivory, a bit more water. Keep it flowing off nicely. Always test this stuff. Just make sure that it's leaving the brush well. And don't wait around too much because it's a small brush, it'll dry out quick, especially if you're somewhere hot. There you go. Now, I'm, I'm going to dot the tops of these and kind of not even bother going down to make it look it's shiny at the top. It's also less for me to screw up. I quite, you know, I struggle with the straight lines. So if I have to do less, great. Makes such a huge difference. We're good. So let's see what a difference this makes. A lot easier to paint them out of the model, by the way. So I'd really recommend this. I've just stuck it on a bit of sprue, or you can pin it or something on a model holder, which would have actually been really helpful. Huge, right? Such a big difference on a basic, I nearly called it a marine, Stormcast. They're practically the same, aren't they? All right, we're done. Went better than you'd think. I mean, we were only going for army level here, so the bar was set at realistic, which is always a good place to set it. But I think you're about to surprise yourself if you try out this technique. Take your time, think of the zones as we thought. You can even draw a little picture on your palette or something like that, or have a reference up. You can turn the picture black and white or improve the contrast. So it looks like basically black, gray, or white, and that might help you block in where things are. If you're in doubt, like look at your face with a light pointing at it in front of a mirror, or pick up a portrait photo or something like that. Find one on Google. You will surprise yourselves. Check out Eric's video. He's a master. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to check out the rest of our content for plenty of Skaven Tide stuff. This is a bit of a generic one, but we've got some very Skaven-y stuff on there. And we've got some pretty cool Stormcast as well. So yeah, keep us posted on what you'd like to see next. The best suggestion will win a set of your choosing and a texture palette of your choosing. Subscribe if you're not. And we'll catch you in the next video.